What's up Node.js developers? Today uh, we're gonna build a highly performant blog website using Gatsby for the frontend and WordPress as a content management system. And in this video, we're gonna start by setting up and deploying the WordPress website that will gonna help us manage our content for the blog website. Then we're gonna create a Gatsby website uh, for the front end, uh, and this website will is gonna be served to the end users. And I'm gonna talk about uh, the advantage of this uh, later in the video. Then we're gonna connect the Gatsby with the WordPress. So we're gonna read all the information from, from the WordPress and build it in Gatsby. After which we're gonna deploy uh, the Gatsby website and then we're gonna set up automatic builds. So every time a new post appears in WordPress, we're gonna rebuild our Gatsby website and deploy it in a, in a matter of seconds. And if you're new to this channel, hi, my name is Vadim and on this channel, I'm trying to share my experience and knowledge about uh, modern uh, web and mobile development using React.js, React Native, AWS Amplify, MarinStack and and so on. And if you're interested in this kind of content, consider subscribing to my channel not to miss any future videos. Also, don't forget to turn on the notification bell because we're going live every Friday at 3 p.m. GMT and you don't want to miss that. And let's get back to the build that we're gonna do today. And the first thing that I want to introduce is about the architecture. Uh, that we're gonna deploy and that, that we're gonna build by the end of this video. And first of all, we're gonna start with the WordPress website. And this we WordPress website is gonna be used by the content editors uh, that will uh, create the blog post, that will edit the blog post, uh, that will add the, and manage all the content on the website. The WordPress CMS is gonna be deployed to Hostinger. Uh, because they offer some optimized solutions specifically for uh, deploying WordPress websites. Now looking at the right side, here we see that we're gonna use a Gatsby website and this Gatsby website will serve the traffic to the end users, uh, the people that will read our blog. Whenever we will build the Gatsby website, uh, we will read all the data from the WordPress and we're gonna build this static uh, website from the, from the data that we receive from the WordPress. Now let's uh, zoom in a bit on every single technology that we are gonna use in this build and see what are the advantages and disadvantages of them and specifically uh, what is the power of using Gatsby with WordPress in combination. And first I would like to start with a sponsor of today's video which is Hostinger. Hostinger is a web server provider that offers fast service servers with 99.9% uh, uptime guarantee. And I found that their price over quality ratio and also the chat support is one of the best out there. I decided to use Hostinger for uh, today's build because they are optimized for WordPress. Uh, they have an easy to use uh, control panel and also they offer a free uh, domain name with SSL. You can get up to 91% discount for uh, the yearly plans by following the link in the description below, uh, hostinger.com slash Vadim or uh, by using the promo code Vadim uh, at checkout. Hostinger offers 30 days money back guarantee, so there is no string attached. More about Hostinger, you're gonna see a bit later in the video when we're gonna use it to deploy a WordPress uh, website. Speaking about WordPress, we're gonna use it in today's build because it's an open source website builder uh, that is very popular and very mature. It has been around for years. And the interesting fact is that uh, more than 40% of the websites nowadays uh, are using WordPress. It's great for building blogs, portfolio, e-commerce website. And the most important part about uh, WordPress is their powerful uh, CMS, the content management system. And this is the specific reason why we're gonna use it in today's video. We're gonna leverage this uh, powerful CMS part of a WordPress to build our blog. Now let's cover uh, the sexiest technology in this stack, which is Gatsby. Gatsby is an open source front-end framework uh, on top of React.js. Gatsby offer SSG, which is static site generator. And that means that uh, we, it allows us to uh, write our website using our beloved React.js. And then at build time, it builds uh, the website to a static website in HTML, CSS, and vanilla JavaScript. 
This is the main selling point of Gatsby and it fix, fixes a lot of issue that usual uh, SPA, single page application, applications using React.js has, which are um, SEO optimization and so on. So by building the website to a static website, we get insane speed benefits and security as well as uh, SEO optimization. These benefits makes Gatsby a very good choice for uh, most of the websites that have limited amount of uh, content, uh, such as blogs, e-commerce, uh, and that are focused on performance and speed. Now, when you pair the performance, the speed, the SEO optimization of a Gatsby website with a powerful CMS uh, of WordPress, you get unbeatable uh, stack for a blog uh, website and not only. So WordPress and Gatsby is really great for the content teams who are already comfortable with the WordPress content editing experience or for example, for uh, redesigning an existing WordPress website because you will have uh, all the content in WordPress and then you're gonna just build a uh, powerful front end in Gatsby connected to uh, the WordPress, get all the data from there and you'll not need to migrate any data to anywhere else. WordPress and Gatsby is not uh, so great for teams that require the use of the WordPress UI themes because we're not gonna use the front end of a WordPress, we're gonna use it only as a CMS, uh, and those looking for a fully managed cloud CMS. With that being said, let's roll our sleeves and let's get working. And the first step is to create an account on Hostinger, uh, and also don't forget to use the promo code Vadim for up to 91% discount. And after that, we're gonna register the free domain and continue setting up the WordPress. So let's get started. And yeah, here is the Hostinger website. Um, they offer two uh, free, yeah, free plans. For the single uh, shared hosting, it offers hosting for only one website. website. Uh, if you decide uh, that you will need more website and also yeah, more storage, um, you can go with the premium shared host, host, hosting. That's what, what we, I'm gonna select for uh, today. And also yeah, they, for this, they offer a free domain name. Um, yeah, you can pay in, uh, uh, per month. Uh, you can pay for 12 months in advance, 24, 48, and so on. And the more you, you pay in advance, the better the savings. So it's up to 80% here. And with the promo code, it's even more. So I already have an account and for this uh, tutorial, I'm gonna go with uh, one month. Let me select the... Email, uh, payment, yeah, I'm gonna go with PayPal. You can also pay with uh, Bitcoins and Ethereum and so on. Uh, and here, yeah, uh, don't forget to press on the coupon code and write here the coupon code Vadim. And you can get a lot of discount with a coupon code uh, because it's only for the one year plans. And in that case, you're gonna get yeah, up to 90%, 91% discount. So, okay, let me uh, submit the payment. And after confirming the payment, we get to the uh, getting started guide. Uh, yeah, let's press start now. Name your website. Uh, okay, let's, we have ability to buy a new domain uh, from Hostinger or to use an existing domain uh, name that we uh, purchased from another registrar. Uh, it's not that important the domain name because it's gonna be used only internally by the content writers. Uh, we're gonna have another domain for the end users website. So in this case, yeah, I'm gonna buy a domain from here. Like, uh, let's continue. Uh, which way do you want to go? Start from sketch or move an existing website? We're gonna build a new website. Um, yes, I have some experience building websites. Okay, let's uh, select a platform. And here we're gonna uh, select the WordPress. Let's add an email address and a password. And uh, this will be the credentials to log in in our WordPress instance. So please remember, uh, remember the email address and the password that you set here. Uh, let's continue. I hope that I will remember. And yeah, uh, we, we should select uh, a theme. So it really doesn't matter which theme that we will select 
because we are not gonna use the UI of WordPress. So I'm gonna go with this one. And um, yeah, let's finish up and check that all the information uh, is correct here. You can also choose the location of a, uh, of a website to be the closest to your end customers or the uh, content uh, editors. So in my case, I'm gonna stick with Europe. Uh, okay, let's finish the setup. This process takes around three minutes and our website is ready. Let's click on the manage, manage site and that will open the, um, the management panel. And from the panel, uh, first of all, I will have to purchase the domain. Uh, however, if you uh, chose the one year plan, uh, you had the domain for free. So let me finish the uh, domain purchase. And then we're gonna be go back to, to setting up everything. After paying for the domain, uh, let's finish up the setup of this domain. So I'm gonna select the country. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be a personal domain. And here I'm gonna fill in uh, my personal details and then I'm gonna finish a registration. Once we filled all the information, we are done. So let's continue. And we go back to the hosting tab and let's click on the manage for our um, website. Here uh, on the top, we have a WordPress. So let's open the dashboard uh, of our WordPress website. But it still shows me an error and saying that the domain is not pointing to Hostinger, but that's not the case. It just hasn't been updated. And uh, the domain propagation sometimes might take up to 24 hours. However, if I press on the website, I see that it's already there uh, with a preview domain. That's only like uh, in the beginning, then uh, this preview domain will go away. So let's, uh, let's manage it from here uh, and let's open the um, uh, admin panel by adding vp slash admin, not slash, but dash. And here we're gonna use the credentials that we, that we use to, uh, to set up WordPress. And let's log in. All right, so we uh, are in our dashboard for WordPress. Uh, if you're not familiar with WordPress, um, have some time, look around what you can see here. Uh, the most important parts that we're gonna touch in this um, tutorial is gonna be the post page. And here we will be able to manage all the posts to write new posts and so on. Then the media, uh, and this is the library of all the images that we are gonna use uh, for, our, um, for our data. And also the plugins tab where we will have to install a couple of plugins to uh, finish the setup. All right, the first step is done. We created and we will also deploy the WordPress website. We see it there, uh, it's available to, um, to be edited. Uh, the next step is to install and activate two packages. And these are the WordPress GraphQL and WordPress Gatsby. And the first one will allow us to access the data uh, using a GraphQL endpoint. And uh, this is required because Gatsby is working with, uh, with GraphQL and the WordPress Gatsby plugin uh, will uh, change some data in order to make it uh, accessible from the Gatsby. So let's uh, go ahead and install these two packages. Let's go to our plugins page and on the top here, uh, we can press on the add new uh, plugin. And in the search uh, toolbar here, we can search for the VP GraphQL and is the first one, so let's install it. And also the VP uh, Gatsby, right? Or how is it called? Yeah, VP Gatsby. Gatsby. And this is the first, uh, yeah, this is the plugin that we need to install, so let's press install. After installing the packages, we also need to activate them. So let's go to the installed uh, plugins. And from here, we will search the, the two plugins that we have installed. So the first one is uh, VP Gatsby. Let's try to activate it. 
and also the VP uh, GraphQL activated. And then um, they can be found in the active tab, in the active packages. And they are here, which means that we have installed and activated them successfully. And that's it uh, regarding the configuration uh, on the WordPress part. Now we will go to uh, the interesting part and we're gonna create a Gatsby uh, website from scratch and we're gonna uh, set it up to be able to communicate with our WordPress website. For this step, I expect that you uh, have Node.js and Git installed on your system. In my case, uh, I have Node uh, version 15, uh, but uh, it will work with a lower version as well, like 14 and 12. After installing Node.js and Git, if you don't have them already on your system, we can go ahead and uh, install Gatsby CLI using npm. So let's try npm install uh, dash g for global and Gatsby CLI. The Gatsby CLI is a tool that will allow us to bootstrap new projects and to run them. So yeah, that's gonna be helpful for us. Yeah, all right, so yeah, I have some warning, but that's some normal things for a developer. Uh, I can now call Gatsby. So um, first of all, I'm gonna uh, create a new folder for our project. So I'm gonna go in YouTube. So I navigated to the path uh, where I want to um, generate the Gatsby website. And to generate a Gatsby uh, project, we're gonna use the Gatsby new and the name of our uh, website. You can give any name uh, for the project. And also with Gatsby, the cool thing is that we can use these starters. And these are boilerplate projects that uh, help us to get started with, with the technologies. There are a lot of uh, Gatsby starters on the internet, on the Gatsby website. So if you write Gatsby starters, you can find a lot of them there. Um, and you can choose from any starter that you would like. Uh, yeah, we have different designs. For example, yeah, that, that's a really cool uh, design. Uh, we have some pre-installed packages, pre-installed setup, and so on. For this build, we're gonna use a starter that is already uh, set up to work with a WordPress CMS. And the starter is called uh, Gatsby Starter WordPress Blog. Um, you have a link in the presentation here. Uh, and yeah, however, if you want to use another starter because you like a design there, or if you want to integrate this WordPress uh, communication in an already existing Gatsby website and you're not start starting from scratch, uh, the only thing that uh, you need to set up is a plugin and the plugin, uh, it's called, where is it? Yeah, in the Gatsby source, the plugin is called uh, Gatsby source WordPress. And here you have um, you have tutorials and installation and getting started guide how to to add this Gatsby um, uh, source WordPress in your project. In our case, uh, this is already done for us in the started starter that we're gonna use. So let's copy this command and run it here. Will it take it? as two lines or, yeah, I, I hope. And let's wait a couple of uh, seconds until it uh, bootstrap our project and then we're gonna see what we have. All right, so it has finished. So now we can uh, do CD uh, not just blog to go there and it's not there, why? Uh, let me check, ls cd not just blog. Yeah, it's there. And now I can open it in uh, Visual Studio Code. So we can uh, continue from there. And apparently I messed up something because, uh, because of that new line in the command. So I'm gonna remove um, the generated folder. I'm gonna start from uh, scratch. So let me remove it. And then uh, let me go back to that command. And here, let's make sure that they are in the same line. 
let's execute and um, and try it now and once that's ready uh, let's try it again so let's open the folder open it in our visual studio code and here it is so um, first of all I'd like to open the terminal and run uh, Gatsby develop this will, uh, will start the development server so we can see what do we have at the moment And after it has built everything, we can access the local host at port 8000. And here we see the blog that has been built. So this is, a, it's pretty simple design, uh, but we, we will be able to adjust it for our needs if we want to. Uh, yeah, but that's not the purpose of, uh, of this tutorial. In this tutorial, we want to connect it with a WordPress because at the moment, uh, this is not the content that is coming from WordPress. And to do that, uh, let's, op let's open the Gatsby config file. Uh, and here under the Gatsby source WordPress, we need to provide a URL of, um, of our WordPress website that we have deployed. So let's go back to, to our WordPress website. Where is it? So at the moment it's gonna be pr probably preview because it's not updated yet, I guess, but let's have a look. I uh, know uh, it, it's actually updated, so we can uh, use the the URL without like the preview part. Uh, so let's copy that and let's set it up here. Don't forget uh, to add the uh, slash GraphQL at the end. So let's save and let's open our blog here. Uh, I think we should uh, restart the server to to see the changes. Let's have a look right now and see if we uh, it has been updated. So let's restart our local host. And here we see our new uh, title of a page of a website uh, and with our uh, the first post that was there in um, in WordPress. It was that easy to connect it with a WordPress and now uh, yeah and now we can go back to to our CMS. And, and start writing posts that were going to be showed in our uh, blog in the Gatsby. If I go to the uh, new post We can add here as much content as we want. Uh, and also uh, we can uh, go here uh, in the right panel, click on the post and add a featured image. So we can either upload one or select from the media library that we already have on this website. So if I select it from here, set featured image. Uh, and then if I publish the post, then I can go back to our website and it's already there, my new post. Uh, and if I open it, uh, I see the, the image. And if you saw uh, how image was loaded, uh, initially it was very pixelated and then it appeared in good quality. And this is the Gatsby um, optimization that is happening behind the scenes. We are using lazy loading and for images that are, um, that are very heavy. 
uh, they scale it down in order to, to save the bandwidth and to serve the content as fast as possible. And then once the page is loaded, they can um, load the, like the full image behind the scenes. And this is really saves a lot of time because the biggest assets on a page are most usually uh, the, the images. So yeah, here we see the featured image and down below we see all of the, um, all the content of um, that we wrote there and also the information about the writer which is kind of missing at the moment but we can also adjust it uh, from the wordpress so if we go back uh, to the wordpress let's go here and we go to the users uh, tab and let's edit the, the user um, that we have there. We can scroll down and here provide a first name. We can provide a second name. Uh, you can also have a nickname if you want. The, um, the display name will be, uh, yeah, let's choose Vadim Savin. Contact info, website. You can add also the Twitter URLs, Facebook URLs some uh, short bio and also you can uh, change your profile picture by uh, following this URL so let's update the profile and yeah it's working so here we already see that it's written by uh, Vadim uh, this is the bio uh, this is the URL for the Twitter and yeah, this bio component is visible in every post here at the bottom. We can yeah, adjust uh, how it is displayed, like what information we display, the style of it and so on. To, uh, to do that, uh, let's have a look at the structure of our project and what components we already have. So for that, let's open the uh, SRC. And the first thing that uh, I want to show is the templates. And here we have two tem templates. And the first one is the blog post template. And this is the template for displaying the page of one blog post. First of all, it has a component for the SEO that displays the post title as the title uh, of the page. And if you see here, yeah, it's my new post uh, in the title of the page. Also, it has the description. Uh, then for the article, it has the, um, the title as a header, then it ho uh, has the date of the title. If uh, the, the post has a featured image, because this is optional, it also displays the image. Uh, then it displays um, all the content that, that the, the post has. After which it displays this component bio in the footer uh, of the article. So here is all the styles that you can also adjust as you fit uh, suitable for, for your needs. The next one from the templates is the blog post archive. And this is uh, the page that displays uh, all the blog posts. So in this case, this is the, our home page. It displays like a list of blog posts. And here you can see that uh, again, it displays the, the bio component. Uh, and if there is no post, it displays that the blog has no posts. Otherwise, uh, it will display them uh, as a list uh, and it will map through all the posts and return them uh, yeah, as an article here. Again, you can uh, adjust them as you see uh, fit. From the components, uh, we have a bio component and here the bio component has a query that queries the, um, uh, the first name, the Twitter description, avatar of the offer uh, from WordPress. So with this data, uh, it will display all the information that we saw there. The layout component is just uh, a helper component that helps us um, render pages. It will include the header with the homepage, with the links to the homepage, um, as well as everything that we send to be rendered. And lastly, yeah, the SEO component uh, uses the helmet uh, package in order to set 
um, everything related to our uh, yeah, header uh, parameters, such as the title, the metadata, and this is to, uh, yeah, to improve the SEO of our uh, website. If you're familiar with React.js, it's going to be very easy to uh, adjust and to grow this website, uh, to add extra features, to uh, change the design, the layout and everything. But now let's focus on the next step. Uh, and the next step would be to actually deploy this website. Uh, because yeah, it's not very nice when you share a local host uh, URL with your friends. So uh, the first thing that I want to show you is the build command of Gatsby. So if we run uh, the build command, then uh, Gatsby will, uh, will convert and will build all our website uh, to a static website. So there will be no uh, React uh, JS in the end. Everything will be in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. We can see this static content in the public directory. And here, if I will uh, find the index HTML, this is a poor, poor HTML uh, file, I can open it in browser. And here we can see our website, everything is working. Uh, you don't need any server to, uh, to serve this content. Everything is just pure HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And it's also optimized for production. Now you can take this public folder and easily deploy it anywhere on the web uh, without needing to have like uh, a high performance server or something like that. You can actually take this uh, folder, upload it to S3, and this way you have a highly performant website with S3 and CDN. However, today we're gonna use the uh, Gatsby Cloud to build uh, and deploy uh, our Gatsby website uh, because this will uh, help us uh, automatically build the website whenever we change the data in uh, WordPress. But before deploying it to Gatsby, we first of all have to uh, create the Git repository and publish the website on our GitHub account. So uh, let's do that. GitHub. And I'm gonna create a, a new repository. Uh, Gatsby. WordPress blog. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be public. Let's create it. And from our terminal, let's check if we have initialized. Yeah, we, we have a, a Git repository already initialized. So I'm gonna do git add everything, git commit, uh, connect with our WordPress and then let's just um, copy the git remote add origin uh, to connect it with our github repository let's switch the branch and let's push it All right, let's uh, refresh our GitHub repository. And here we should see all the files for our website. Okay, that's nice. Now we can uh, actually go to uh, gatsby.js.com uh, gatsby uh, and you can uh, create an account. Uh, it's gonna be free uh, for our use case. Yeah, the free account is enough for us. So in, I will log in and I'm gonna press add a site here on top. Uh, and I'm gonna choose import from a Git repository. So let's do that. Uh, Git provider, in our case, it's gonna be GitHub. Uh, select an organization. First of all, uh, you will need to authorize GitHub. Uh, so you're, you're gonna need to, yeah, um, 
click a button, then go uh, and authorize uh, Gatsby Cloud to access your repositories. I already did that, so I can, I'm can i able to select my organization and also select the repository. So the repository will be, why you don't show the, oh, because I, uh, okay. I gave it access only to to an old repository. So I should somehow give it access to um, to Fry's authorize Gatsby to another repository as well. So let me check how to do that. So in my case, I have to go to uh, my settings in GitHub. You don't have to do that if you already selected the correct uh, repository when you gave access or if you gave access to all your repositories. And here I'm gonna go to applications and Gatsby Cloud configure. And in the configuration page, uh, let me select another, uh, yeah, not just, ooh, how is it called? Oh, Gatsby, Gatsby WordPress blog. And let's save. All right. And back to the Gatsby cloud. Here we can select uh, the our repository. Okay, the base branch will be main. That's okay. Base directory, we'll leave it the default. Uh, on the next page, uh, yeah, there is a optional integration for your site and we can, uh, yes, yeah, set up integration, but we don't have, we don't need any integration, uh, not even WordPress because we're gonna do it manually uh, just by copying this. But yeah, let's, let's speak about that a bit later. So skip this step and let's press, uh, okay. On the last step is about the environmental variables and uh, it automatically fetched that we are using the, this environment, environment variable. So I'm gonna copy it from our uh, Gatsby config. We already set this environment variable here. Let's copy it, let's paste it. Uh, and the same thing for the preview. Let's do it and save. Now we can press on the create site and this will uh, yeah, set up everything, create the site, build it and also deploy it to Gatsby Cloud. Now here on the website page, uh, we see in the latest production build that it's currently building. So we should wait until it finishes and then we will be able to access this URL. Also with Gatsby Cloud, you can uh, set up a custom domain name uh, for your uh, blog because you probably won't uh, want to use that .gatsby by js .io. .io. So uh, yeah, you can click here on setting up a custom domain. You can use um, a domain name that you registered. Uh, and another thing with Gatsby Cloud is if you go to site settings, and if we click on the hosting, uh, here we can see that, yeah, uh, at the moment we have deployed to the Gatsby hosting, but you might want to deploy it to another hosting providers. So here you see uh, all a list of all the hosting providers that Gatsby Cloud uh, works with. So you can go with Netlify, you can go with Firebase, with AWS S3, Google Storage, Vercel, uh, and so on. So you just connect it and then your Gatsby Cloud will, will serve only as a CI CD pipeline that will build our project whenever we have changes and then deploy it to uh, any solution, any hosting providers that, uh, that you want. So back to our builds tab. Uh, we see that yeah, our build, uh, the first time it takes a little bit more time. Uh, it took around one minute, but later it's gonna be much less. And then it also has been deployed. So now if we open the website here, we see uh, everything uh, on our Gatsby Cloud, uh, which is hosted, available on the internet. All right, so we uh, created and set up the project. 
Uh, now it's time to connect it with WordPress for uh, automatically, automatically builds and also for previewing. Uh, to do that, uh, let's go to our uh, Gatsby Cloud page uh, to the site settings. And here uh, on the first general page, if we scroll down a bit or if we press on the webhooks, uh, we see the preview webhook webhook and also the build webhook. And uh, yeah, we can uh, do a post request to this, um, for example, to this uh, URL. And this way we inform Gatsby that there is some new content and we need to rebuild, uh, we need to rebuild the application in order to have this new content there. So let's copy this one and go to our WordPress um, website here. In the uh, settings page, we see a Gatsby option. Let's press on the Gatsby. And here is where we can uh, set up all these URLs. For example, the first one is the uh, build webhook URL. So let's paste the, the URL that we just copied. Then we can also enable Gatsby preview. This will allow us to preview uh, the content before we publish it. Uh, and this is yeah, a very powerful uh, feature in order yeah, to check not to make mistakes. So for the preview webhook, let's copy uh, this one from here. I'm gonna copy back to our uh, WordPress uh, preview webhook. This is the second one. And for the preview instance, we need to give a URL of our website. For example, this one. Let's paste here in the preview instance. And then we can save the changes and we can try it out and see if it works. Let's go to our posts and let's try to create a new post. Let's press on the add new post. New post. Are you updating? Let's also select a featured image. And uh, yeah, let's publish it. Yeah, if we go back to the Gatsby Cloud, we see that it had, had triggered a build. So the building uh, started. And yeah, it should take around 30 seconds to build and um, another 10 seconds to deploy it. So let's wait a bit. So it has finished building in yeah less than one minute, which is really fast. Uh, and yeah, initially it might not be uh, in instantly available to you on the main website uh, because usually the content is cached. So it takes a couple of minutes until uh, you get a new version. Uh, however, you can press on the view build here. And here we will see the new post. And yeah, if I check the, the main, the uh, domain uh yeah it took some time but um after some time we see the um, the post here as well that means that yeah the um, uh, wordpress automatically uh triggered a build in gatsby cloud uh, Gatsby Cloud built the website using the new data from WordPress and then it deployed to uh, Gatsby Cloud and we can see our site in production with all our new data. One thing that I saw that is uh, not working in production is whenever we click on a post, it doesn't do anything. Uh, however, we see that in the um, URL on the top, actually the post ID changes but it's, uh, it's using a variable. It's using, uh, yeah, like um, get, HTTP get variable instead of having, for example, I don't know, a new post. Uh, 
so uh, to fix that, let's go back to our dashboard uh, in the WordPress and in the settings, uh, let's go to the permalinks. And this is where we select how should the link of each post be. So the first one is, uh, yeah, with this question mark P and the ID of a post. This is first of all, not very SEO friendly. So in our case, we can uh, choose either um, a day uh, and the name of a post or we can choose, uh, yeah, only the post name uh, at the end of our URL. So let's uh, save our changes. Uh, yeah, and go uh, to our post and let's try to create a new post and see if uh, it will work. A new post with permalink. Hello there. So yeah, uh, after that, let's try to publish our content. Publish, publish. And uh, yeah, here in the post, in the permalink, we can see, uh, yeah, uh, the title of the, of the text. All right, let's uh, go back to uh, our Gatsby, wait until it rebuilds. Yeah, it has, the building has started. I'll close everything. And then we will see if uh, the new URLs are working for the post pages. And the build is done, it's really quick. Uh, let's view the build uh, by pressing on the view build. And here uh, we see our new post with permalink. Let's press on this one and we see uh, that the new URL is uh, as we expect, not with like an ID, but with actual title. And we see the post page with, uh, with its content. So I'm wondering if it will work for the previous ones as well. So if I press here, no, it will not work with, for the previous posts. So you'll probably have to manually go back and delete the permalink in uh, WordPress for the previous posts. However, for all the new posts, it's going to be available um, here in Gatsby. All right, guys. So uh, we finished connecting with uh, WordPress for uh, automatic bills and the preview. And uh, yeah, with this, we have a highly performant blog uh, that is going to serve traffic to our end users in an optimal way with high speed and high security. Our end site is a static website, which can be served from uh, yeah, anywhere, from an S3, from Gatsby Cloud, from Netlify, or yeah, uh, even for, from GitHub pages, you can serve it. And at the same time, we can manage all the content for our blog using WordPress, which is very powerful. And uh, it has it is being used by a lot of companies nowadays. And this way, we can have a, a performant website with an old school uh, CMS that it's working, it's there, and it does its job. So that's it for today, guys. Thanks again to Hostinger for uh, sponsoring this video and making it possible. And also don't forget to uh, get up to 91% discounts for your yearly plans with Hostinger uh, using the link down in the description. If you enjoyed this video, uh, please drop a like, consider subscribing to the channel and let me know down below in the comments what other videos uh, should I make in future. But for now, stay hydrated, take care and write link code. Bye bye.